Now I did do my Tarot Book of the Month Club reading. So I guess we can talk about that next. I read Journey Through the Guy on Tarot. And actually Laura, who's here in chat with us, read this as a buddy read, which was really nice and motivating. It made sure that I did finish by the end of the month and I got through it. So Journey Through the Guy in Tarot by Joanna Powell Colbert. Now, I love her deck. I love the imagery of her deck. I will just show you some images while I talk about this. Um, I like her art style. I like her choices. I feel like her images are very open, um, very accessible, very leave a lot of room for interpretation. And they're very beautiful. Um, and she's very inclusive in terms of choosing, you know, representing a wide swath of humanity. Um, she, for the, some of the majors, she renamed them. And for some of, and for all of the court cards, she, she renamed those and she assigned, um, a mix of gender expressions to each, uh, court station. So, instead of having like all the pages male and all the queens female or whatever, um, her equivalents are two male for each and two female for each. So there's a lot I like about this deck. Let me talk about some things that I don't like about the guidebook because the guidebook for me, it was just very hit and miss. Um, so I feel like in general, she didn't spend equal time and energy on all of the cards. And it was very weird because I've seen a lot of guidebooks where they'll write like 10 pages per major and a paragraph for each minor. That's pretty common. What isn't as common is really going in, de in depth on some of the majors and then mailing it in on some of the others or going in depth on some of the minors and then having very one dimensional interpretations for others. And there would there seemed to be no rhyme or reason. So I don't know if it's just because she has favorite cards or she hasn't had certain cards come up in readings that have different dimensions or something. I mean, I know she's been into tarot for like decades, so it's hard for me to imagine exactly why this is. Um, but let me give you some examples. So I did a reading for a friend and this five of water came up. Now in the book, in the beginning, she talks about how um, every tarot card should have positive, negative, and neutral, uh, you know, the, the ability to interpret it positively, negatively, or in a more neutral way, depending on the context, which is something I totally believe in. But let's look at what she wrote for the five of water, if I can find it. Okay. So, a woman sits on a misty shore wrapped up against the cold. She holds a scrying bowl in her hands, but no images have arisen in it. Her longing gaze is directed inwardly as the fog of depressions descends over the scene. Um, you are hovering on the edge of grief, despondency, or discouragement. You may be regretting lost opportunities or missing someone terribly. Depression has been called anger turned inward and yet also intuition unheeded. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, you may fall deeper into depression and despondency, refusing to move beyond grief or disappointment. Being sad may have become a habit. It's hard to break. So... Yes, I believe any of these things could apply to the Five of Cups or the Five of Water. Um, but I don't think this card is just about depression or grief. And I certainly don't see that in this card in particular. Um, I see the image that she drew very neutrally and very open. You know, this person doesn't look sad or like they're crying or particularly upset. They just look contemplative. Uh, my friend and I were kind of laughing over this bowl here. She's like, it's important that it's a scrying bowl. And, you know, why does it have to be that? And I'm like, yeah, she's not even looking into it. So she's not scrying. She's not using it as a scrying bowl. I'm like, my interpretation of the card is she rode her boat. She parked it. Then she jumped out of the boat, went for a swim. Where she's sitting now is the shore. And this is like a little campsite that she likes to go to when she wants some alone time. 
and she's made herself a nice bowl of tea or soup or something to warm up after she's been swimming. Like that's, that's what I see in the card. And all of that is very open. So is she sad? Maybe. Is she just contemplative? Maybe. You know, who, who knows? It's going to depend on the other cards. It's going to depend on the spread and the question and the querent and all those factors that we talk about in, in terms of giving good, um, giving good readings. And it's just a disappointment to have the book be so one-dimensional in this description, especially when the author mentions that you know, you should interpret, be able to interpret any card is either positive, negative, or neutral, depending on the situation. Um, another thing is just some like kind of, I don't know, cultural weirdness in the way she's written a couple of, um, a couple of descriptions for cards and temperance is a prime example. So let me read you a little bit about this description. Okay. So she says 14 temperance combining opposites pretty de rigueur interpretation. The winged one lifts a shell to pour out her blessings into a bowl of burning herbs. The steaming pool distorts her reflection, or is it distortion, or is distortion an accurate picture of another kind? She is a mixed race child. The bloodlines of many cultures run within her body. By her example, she calls us to integrate all the disparate parts of ourselves. And then there's like more description. And then she says, this perfect balance of opposites graces us with extraordinary beauty. It's a little weird um, and problematic. First of all, cultures don't have bloodlines. <laughs> cultures are cultures. Um, and this this first part of this description, description kind of implies, um, Laura and I were discussing this, um, that, that this is written for a white audience. Um, now, Joanna Powell Colbert is white, and maybe she has sort of blinders on in that way. I mean, I, I could see myself having a similar kind of blind spot where you kind of assume you're talking to people who are similar to yourself, but that's not necessarily the case. So then it's like, this is what white people can learn from people of other cultures. But what if the people reading the book are the people from other cultures? It's a very kind of othering statement. It's very weird. And then this perfect balance of opposites graces us with extraordinary beauty. I'm like, so black people and white people are opposite to each other? That's also problematic. Um, you know, we're all people. Uh, we all have different experiences and different cultures, but we're all people. So it's, it's just a bit odd. Um, and, you know, she says she's mixed race. I don't know. She looks, she looks European to me. Um, so that's near, neither here nor there. I mean, you can't tell someone's ethnicity by how they look, but you also shouldn't ascribe um, traits to people based on the way that they look. That's problematic, right? That's racism, essentially. Um, so I don't think any of this is intentional on Joanna Powell Culver, and I don't think she's like a hateful person. I just, this book was written probably 20, 25 years ago. And it's not really up to date in this way. It has, it has some of this like clumsy stuff in it. So, and, uh, oh, hi, Renee, you're here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, and, and um, uh, Meadowlark Mystic in the comments, she's saying, my kids are mixed race and I felt using the term opposites really strange as well. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's clunky. Um, and so what I, what I would love to see is for Joanna Powell Colbert to like rewrite this book um, and do an updated edition. I think it could be cool because there's a lot of great stuff in here too. And so I wanted to, I wanted to talk about the positives that I found. So let me give you some better examples. So she took, she really talks nicely about uh, the emperor who should have been labeled the builder. The, the title on this Llewellyn version didn't get updated, but she calls this the builder. And it talks about someone who is a caretaker, who, who is a provider, who supports. Um, and it's basically an image of positive masculinity. It's, it's a nice example of that. And so I really liked that. It was a very refreshing and uplifting uh, view. I think a lot of people, you know, I see on Tarot Tube um, have trouble with this card. And, and so I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed her description of justice. Um, which she calls karmic balance. And I always get a little queasy when non-Buddhists 
like throw karma in as if we all know what it is. But I will read you a little bit of what she wrote about this card. So she um, she does mention the, this imagery of like the the heart and the feather, with, which is actually from Egyptian mythology, which I don't quite understand the blending of those two sets of imagery. So using an Egyptian image to represent a Buddhist concept is a little bit weird. But um, she just says that the universal law of cause and effect is karmic balance. And that's true. Um, karma just means action. That's the literal translation. So it's it's your actions and the effect they have on the world around you or the people around you or yourself. Um, so I, I like that. Um, and I think she did a good job there. I love that she includes people of a very wide age range. I would say this deck is the one that has the widest age range. So she's got like very little kids. And then she's got quite a few old people. And not just like, you know, sexy looking 20 year olds with white hair. Um, but like, look at this guy. He's got wrinkles. He's bald. You know, he's got very saggy skin. Um, and he's playing the flute. And she brings uh, music into her description of sort of what the air suit does. And I love that. So let's see if I can find Elder of Air. Can you hear the sweet sound rising from the aromatic cedar flute? A grandfather's prayer of thanksgiving wafts to the heavens as his breath becomes melody and harmony. This is a man who has dedicated his life to bringing peace and healing through music. The medicine of music creates a sanctuary for those in physical or spiritual pain and stirs others to make a difference in the world. And she goes on. Um, so there's there's really, you know, beautiful uh, descriptions and, and kind of after affirmations here. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Laura's saying that the the um the builder or the emperor card is wesley from from the princess bride <laughs> oh my sweet wesley yes build me a castle and you're like he totally would um so there's there's stuff like this that i love um something else i love about this deck is that you know i'm not really into animal decks i, I love animals but i have a hard time translating animal energy into like tarot reading uh situations but i'm okay with the animals that she chose to put in here they make sense to me. I think they correspond well to um, the imagery or the, you know, the ideas that 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 the cards represent. Um, so I really enjoy these. <laughs> this Four of Earth is one of my favorite cards. Um, Mr. Squirrel with all of his cash of nuts there. So yeah, it's good. Um, some more pluses and minuses about this, just to be uh, as thorough as pos possible. She does spend a lot of time on sacred menstruation or menstruation as a sacred spiritual time for those of us who menstruate. And I don't know about you, <laughs> any of you who still menstruate, but that's not a sacred and special time for me. It's just um, a time when I don't feel well and I want to lay around the house and eat chocolate. Um, so I don't, I don't feel like I get any special insight, um, when that's taking place, you know? So there's just, there's just a few like things like that, um, that, that bother me kind of assumptions, I guess I'd say. Um, she also assumes that you're coming at this from a certain point of view, which is, you know, that you recognize, uh, five elements or five aspects as being fire, water, earth, air, and spirit. But I, I don't use the concept of spirit, uh, at all. Um, and also not in my tarot readings, um, or that, you know, what Kundalini yoga is or for that, you know, what Reiki is or what it's for. Um, she just kind of throws these things into her descriptions, like practice Reiki or, you know, the Kundalini yoga thing is coming out of this person. And it's like, she doesn't tell you what it is. So it feels a little slapdash and it feels a little bit like the mixed salad bar of spirituality where you're like, oh, I'll have a scoop of Hindu and a, you know, give me a, a, a teaspoon of Christianity and, you know, half a pack of, um, you know, guy and earth, earth based religion and just kind of mix it all up into this mishmash. Um, and that bugs me because it's, it's sort of nonspecific and it's weirdly assumptive, uh, to me. So again, it's, it may sound like a picky detail, but, but for those reasons, I wouldn't actually recommend reading this book for a newbie. Um, I think it would give them kind of a weird perspective on what tarot is and what it can be used for. 
And I think it would be better to start elsewhere and then come to this after you have your own uh, comfort level reading tarot and then you can, you know, go from there and kind of take what resonates, right? That's the thing that we always say, take what resonates and leave the rest. But that said, none of this bothers me in terms of the imagery. So I, I feel like I can pitch all of her descriptions out the window if I want to and just read the cards the way I like because the, the artwork is much more open and it's much more um, uh, flexible and delightful and resonating than I would say probably 70% of the book is. So I still recommend this deck. Um, I still think it's a great one to read with. I, th I think the deck itself could work for a beginner if if they could sort of figure out how to work with the um, non-traditional images. But, you know, or maybe it's something where you, you know, learn on some more conventional kind of deck and then come over here for a breath of fresh air. Other things I like about the book, um, I will say, is that uh, every card gets journal prompts and it also gets an affirmation. And most of the affirmations are pretty good. I'm not really an affirmations person. I don't have like a affirmations deck or anything like that. Um, but I do like uh, the affirmations that she includes. For example, for Five of Earth, I have the skills it takes to survive any crisis. You know, I'll pick out another one. For Eight of Earth, I cultivate patience as I learn so that I may share my gifts with others. So there's some really nice ones. For Child of Water, I imagine a life filled with love, art, and spirituality. So, you know, there's some really, there's some really good ones. And I like her journaling prompts. Um, some of them are a little bit weird and specialized, but again, most of them are pretty good. And I think that they can be fun. You could even use the journal prompts as ways to make a spread, right? You could pick out some of the different journal prompts throughout the book and then use those as spread positions and then read off of that. So I think the book has a lot to offer if you are an experienced tarot reader and if you can kind of critically make up your own mind about what she's writing about any particular card. I just wouldn't recommend it for like a rank beginner. Um, I guess is where I'm going with that. But I'm glad I read it. I did get a lot out of it and I do want to try. She has some really good spreads in the back, um, including a New Year's spread and um, another one where you have the querent actually go through the majors and pick out two majors, but they don't, you don't tell them why. You just have them t say like, okay, where are you gonna start and where are you gonna end with this question? And they just sort of pick them out based on their own feeling. And then you work that into the reading. And I think that's a really interesting reading. I would love to do that, especially with somebody who doesn't read tarot, like a novice person who's just coming to me for a reading. I think that would be super cool.